Welcome to AC Physics Exercises number two. Dr. Ken Meyer here with you. So the first one we looked at uh, the fundamentals of AC. Now we're going to learn how to do some phase or maths using complex quantities. As you would have learnt in your theory, uh, complex quantities have both magnitude and direction. And even though we can use some things called complex algebra to do that, we're actually going to use geometry in trade AC theory to do those addition of complex numbers. So we're just going to teach you some of the fundamentals of how to use phasor diagrams and how you can do some mathematics with those phasor diagrams, which is basically geometry. So first exercise 2.1 is draw a phasor diagram to show a voltage of 220 volts lagging the reference by 30 degrees and a voltage of 255 lagging the reference by 15 and indicate the direction of rotation. You can see here we've already put in a scale of 50 volts for every 10 millimeters and I've put in a green arrow showing the horizontal reference. There's a couple of standards we should talk about. First is that an open arrow is a voltage and a closed arrow is a current. Unfortunately on my little electronic thing here that I use on my computer that's not easy to do. So I'll just talk about voltages and currents rather than use open and closed arrows. So you can see here I've indicated the direction of rotation as anti-clockwise and I've put the first phase in at 220 volts at 30 degrees. So I just get my pen out for you. So basically we're saying that that angle in here that is our 30 degrees and it's minus 30 degrees because they said that it was lagging because they use the word lag and we have our rotation in an anti-clockwise direction get my arrow looking better there we go then this voltage had to be behind the reference its magnitude its length that's this one here its length to scale is 220 so 220 would be 50 volts and another 50 volts is 100, 150, 200 and 220 would be just past it. So that is how long my phaser is. So that's that length here and it's, um, what do you call it, it's a little over 4 about 4.1 centimeters in length representing the 220 volts. Next step is we had to add in 250 degrees now lagging by 15 degrees so that's this angle here I'll just get the pen up and running. So there's our pen. So in here, there's our 15 degrees in here. And again, our length is going to be something like about 4.5 centimeters to scale. That's our scale up here. To represent our 250 volts so it's slightly longer than our 220 and our 220 is at 30 degrees again that being our 30 degrees in there that's what your phasor diagram should have ended up looking like so next one um, 2.2 two parts to it a what is the addition of two currents of 12 amps at minus 45 degrees and 17 amps at minus 25. What is the phase 
angle between the result and the reference. So after I've done my addition, what is the phase angle result? So again, we've uh, I've elected to have a five amps per 10 millimeter scale. The first thing I need to do is to put in a reference and because this is a current, we would have voltage as our reference. I might just, I'll put that on the drawing in a moment. So here's our first phases. I've dropped them both in at the same time. So here's our 12 amps at minus 45, so angle all the way across there to there is 45. Our minus 25, of course, will be in here from our reference, and voltage is the reference because we're dealing with some currents in this particular case. So we have to add those two together. And basically what we need to do is, the way I like to do it, is to grab a compass, measure off, say, the green phaser, then put my compass point on the green phaser, and I draw an arc. Then I put my compass on the red phaser, measure its length, but then put the point over there and draw another arc. Where the two arcs cross has to be the addition of the two phases. So you can see there, I've put the first one in, I've basically taken the green phaser and I've put it in, done the same with the red phaser. Where they cross over is the important point. And of course, once we've got that, we're all but done. And the addition is always from the origin. So here's the origin. Origin to the point of the result. So that length is the magnitude. That angle in there is the angle to the reference. So this part here is the part A answer. And that angle in there is the part B answer. So with my protractor, I actually measured the length, scaled it off, and I got 22 amps and 30 degrees. So my length, my magnitude, which is this one, 22 amps. And with my protractor, I measured in here and minus 30 degrees. Now we know the answer has to be less than 45 and greater than minus 25. So it's got to be somewhere in between so we can say, yes, we can kind of double check ourselves. That's got to be in the right order. So there's the full answer. There's the magnitude of the phases their size, and this is the direction. Remembering at all times, an AC quantity, whether it's a voltage or a current, is always going to have those two factors, a magnitude and an angle or a direction. So question 2.3 now, determine from a phase of diagram the supply voltage and the phase angle relationship to the current. So again, we're after two things. We want the supply voltage and we want the phase angle relationship. So let's have a quick look at our diagram. So we want to know what this voltage is across here. It's a series circuit. So we want to know what the phase angle is in here for the current. Sorry, the current is the reference. We've got the phase angle for the voltage and the actual 
voltage itself. So we want the magnitude and we want the direction of this voltage. When we say relationship to the current in a series circuit, the reference is the current. So that's what we've put on the diagram. We've got uh, current as our reference and on this particular drawing I've decided that 5 volts equals 10 millimetres for the scale. So all we have to do is simply put our three voltages on which we're told. We're told the three voltages. So here's our first one. 10 volts at minus 30. So here's our 10 volts at minus 30. Remember our phaser diagram is rotating anti-clockwise. Our next one is 30 volts at minus 60. So here's 30 at minus 60 at 60 degrees in there. And then finally our third phaser reasonably straightforward 20 volts in length and at plus 30. So there's our plus 30 in there. So we've got all the data on our diagram. We've done it all to scale. So we've got a 20 volt long one, a 10 volt length and a 30 volt length scaled off on our drawing. Our next step is we're going to add the two top phases. So again, I'll just turn my pen back on. If I take the short phaser with a compass and put the compass point there and then draw an arc. If I then take the compass and make it this length and then put my point of my compass here and draw another arc. They'll cross at that point there and the resulting phaser is this one through here. Okay, so that's the addition of 20 plus 10, but accounting for the two phase angles. And there you go. There's our 20 volts at 30 degrees plus our 10 volts at minus 30 degrees. So at the moment we really don't care what its actual magnitude is and what its actual angle is because we've now got to add it to this one down the bottom. So we've added this one and this one and got the result which is the green. Now we've got to do a similar thing here and we've now got to add green to the red one, our second step. And again, just to go through the process to get it really clear for you, I'd put a compass over the length of the red phaser. Then I'd put it at the point of the green phaser and I'd scribe an arc out here somewhere because I know it's roughly going to end up out there somewhere. Then I'd put a compass on the green one, measure the green's length. Then put my compass on this point here and draw another arc where the two arcs cross has to be that point. Then remember we have to scribe from the origin. We go from the origin out and that effectively is our 20 volts plus our 10 volts plus our 30 volts but we've also included all the required angles which is very very important and there's our result so you can see the big black phase that I've drawn there from the origin and we have a result of 42.5 volts at minus 25 is the angle so the angle is this one here measure it with your protractor and for me it came out at minus 25 I did it reasonably accurately so you all should come out pretty close to mine and I scaled off the length and got 
2.5 volts. So there's the answer and how we get there for number 2.3. Okay, this time a very, very similar problem, but instead of being voltages we're playing with, we're now playing with currents. So, so determine the total value of the current. That's what we've got to find out. So it's this one here. They're asking us to find out the total current given the branch currents in the diagram below. So we're told that I1 is 12 amps at minus 30 degrees, I2 is 24 amps at plus 12 degrees, and I3 is 24 amps at minus 2. So you can see we have a reference I've already put on the page, and it's going to be the voltage, because the voltage is the one thing that's not going to change in a parallel circuit. And I've nominated a scale of 5 amps equals 10 millimeters. So let's go on to the next step. And you can see here again, I've just added the three phases. Our first phaser, 12 amps at minus 30. So here's 12 amps at minus 30, scaled in place. The next one was uh, I2, 24 amps at plus 12. So this one up here, here's our I2. So that's our I2. And finally, our I3 down here, which was 24 at minus 42. And that first one, of course, was our I1. So again, we will add two of the phases together. So I've added I1 and I2 to begin with, and it almost goes back perfectly along the reference. So you can see here the green phaser, which I'm kind of putting my magenta one on top of. That is I1 plus I2. And it considers the magnitude and it considers the angle. So my next step is now to add this one and this one together. So the other two we need to add in our next step. And you can see here, I've uh, already added them together. And again, I would take the green phaser and put my compass to the full length, then I'd put it on the end of the opposite color, the red one, and I would scribe an arc. I then go and do the exact reverse, I'd go to my red, I then put my compass point on here, and I would scribe an arc back the other way, where the two arcs cross, has to be that point there, and then all I need to do is go from the origin to that point, the angle in there is the angle that we've been asked to determine, the value of the current branch on the diagram below, and the length of the phaser is the magnitude. So in this particular case, our 24 plus 12 plus 24 equals 50 amps at minus 20 degrees. So I get 50 amps at minus 20 degrees Again, I did that pretty accurately. You should get something very, very similar. So there's the end of how to do additions using phaser diagrams, whether you've only got to add two phases together or you've got to add three phases together, whether it's a voltage or it's current, it doesn't matter. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about how phaser addition operates.